We want to thank Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video. If you have anybody who relies on you financially, whether it's a child, an aging parent, a business partner, you need life insurance. It's that simple. Policy Genius makes it easy to get life insurance done. Shopping for life insurance can be one of the easiest tasks on your October to-do list, easier than picking pumpkins, deciding on costumes, or creating your own haunted house. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place, and you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash redpoppyranch. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling for free. The licensed experts at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. Head to policygenius.com slash redpoppyranch to get started right now. Today is the first official day of the fall that the generator had to come on and help bring the uh, Lion Energy Sanctuary system back up to 100%. I'm still running the old Kohler 8 kilowatt uh, generator, uh, which is fine. It just takes way longer than the new Cummins uh, backup generator will take. Uh, so it's about 10.30 in the morning and I'm gonna be very anxious to see when it hits 100%. So I'm gonna run over to uh, my favorite sawmill over the mountain and get a whole bunch of expensive wood uh, that I'm gonna use on everything from the front porch, which I still would like to do this year, uh, to the new barn, to um, just a bunch of stuff. Because the wood is cut green, uh, I'm gonna put it in the shop and let some of it dry out. Some of it is pressure treated and that's the stuff that I'm after. Before the ground freezes, I wanna get these big uh, posts in the ground. But the issue, like everything right now, is I never know what he's gonna have over there at the sawmill. As far as the pressure treated eight by eights that I'm hoping he has, it's kind of a, a crapshoot. I just gotta go see what, uh, what he has over there. So I'm driving the old uh, first gen over there to see uh, what he has and what I can get.
Okay, I got everything mounted up last night. All I have left to do is get this entire array wired up, then run the conduit across to the other uh, first array, tie it in, and we're done. Um, it's supposed to start raining tonight and rain on and off for the next four days. I think tomorrow's a 50% chance of rain and then it's 90% then 50 and 40. So I got to get this done. I've got to get cleaned up. I got to get firewood piled up. It's going to cool off enough to where we're going to be really legitimately burning fires. So I don't have a ton of time, but I need to do this right. I always have mixed emotions when I drive over to the neighboring community where my favorite sawmill is because that community is where my dad grew up. Last week we had the seven year anniversary of my dad's passing. And I find myself always thinking about him and what he would think about our crazy life up here at Red Poppy Ranch. There's an old movie theater left in that town that has to be over 80 years old. And every time I pass it, I find myself thinking about whether or not my dad went to that movie theater when he was a kid. Um, everything is completely wired up on both panels. Um, all that I have left to do is connect this panel, this new array, at the inverter. And of course, it's raining. It wasn't supposed to start raining till tomorrow, so I need to get off the roof. Okay, here we go. Turn the PV back on, and we should be back in business. These are the last two wires for the final array that I need to build. So right now we're, two, we're running on two nine panel, 275 watt arrays. And I, as soon as the weather clears out, I've got to get that last array relocated up to the roof. But uh, other than that, we're good to go. I'm gonna leave this open, hoping that tomorrow I have time to start working on that final array. But uh, so far, so good. Now that we're officially done with our garden season, um, I have a really good friend who had a bunch of Roma tomatoes that she wasn't gonna use. So she gave them to me and she also gave me a chili sauce recipe that I am so excited to try. I've never done it before, but I tried hers and it was super good. It's just Roma tomatoes and some onions and a bunch of seasonings and um, I can't wait to see how it turns out.
Now that the weather is changing enough to where it's going to be harder to work outside, I have to get the shop whipped back into shape and get it ready to be finished. I don't know if I talked about it before, but part of the reason why we bought Cedar's Jeep, where we bought it, was because of the salesman. I've talked about the fact that we have never purchased a new car off of a car lot before, but when we stopped by one of the local car dealerships and looked at the Jeep that would become Cedar's new Jeep, the salesman asked for my name. When I gave him my name, he gave me a strange look and asked me where I was from. When I mentioned the name of the little valley town where all of my descendants were from, and he said I used to mow the front yard around the ranch house where your dad grew up. The salesman and I sat and talked for over an hour while Cedar sat and listened for the most part, but I insisted on looking at other Jeeps before making a decision. Cedar and I drove away, went and got a sandwich, and while we were eating our lunch, I sent a text to the salesman, leaned on the family connection, and we went back and bought that Jeep. When I drove over to the neighboring town to get the lumber for the projects that we have coming up around here, I stopped and talked to one of my cousins who happens to be the salesman's mom. She works at the local newspaper in that town. I hadn't seen her since I was probably seven or eight years old, and it was fun to walk down memory lane with her and talk about our different perspectives of the old homestead where both of our great-great-grandparents first settled. She had some wonderful stories about my dad and my uncles, and I also had some memories about her dad. Her dad ran the dairy in the farm next door to our old ranch house. One morning, my grandfather sent me and my little brother over to the dairy next door to get a three-gallon jug of milk for the family to use over the next few days. I was small enough where that three-gallon jug of milk was just too heavy, so me and my brother placed that jug of milk on my skateboard that I brought from Arizona, and we rolled that heavy jug back to the ranch house on my skateboard.
I found a 1991 Ford F-350 7.3 IDI manual transmission, 4x4, the, the perfect truck. 190,000 miles on it, price point was perfect. The problem was that it was about six and a half hours away, one way. I called two of my, of my friends to uh, rent their trucks, asked them if they would rent their trucks. Uh, they both, I could tell, were not, uh, didn't want to do it. It probably wasn't right for me to ask them to use their nice trucks to go pick up something that, that really was my problem. And the bottom line is if I'm going to drive that far to pick something up, I need to have something dependable to do it. And if it's not going to be this truck, I need to go get a, a truck that's going to be dependable. I want it to be this truck. This truck needs the brakes gone through. It has the original brake rotors on it. Uh, it needs the brake pads replaced. Uh, the motor mounts on these Cummins motors are notorious for getting a little bit sloppy. Um, I, I just want to go through this thing. Uh, the other real big issue is the U-joints. I go through U-joints regardless of what truck it is. I go through U-joints because I'm in four-wheel drive so much, uh, almost on a yearly basis. Um, I, I, could, I could tell the U-joints in this uh, front axle, I think it's a Dana 60 front axle, I could tell that it uh, needed to be replaced. Um, I probably spend two months, maybe even three months out of the year in four-wheel drive. So I need to make sure that these outer U-joints in the front axle are in good shape. Because of the rain, uh, I'm just gonna spend the next two days working on the truck. Um, Cedar helped me and the kids even helped me kind of get the shop whipped back into shape. And uh, real quick now, I'm gonna be back to doing the uh, drywall on the shop, so I needed to get it cleaned up. But uh, we've got like two more days of rain, then a break, then more rain, even a potential for snow. And then it looks like it might warm up a touch, but I think we're in it now. So I'm probably gonna be spending a lot more time in the shop uh, than outside. And so uh, I need to get it finished up. And I need to make this shop the really nice, beautiful shop that I've always wanted. And the only excuse uh, that I have to not have that shop is, is basically me putting the time into finishing it. So I'm gonna work on the Dodge for the next little while and see if I can't get some of these issues figured out. As I took time to visit with my cousin over there, I was constantly thinking about all the things that I have to do back here at our place, but I also had to remind myself to slow down a little bit and enjoy these special moments where we talk about family. As things continue to deteriorate and fall apart, I regularly think about all those that came before us and all the challenges that they may have gone through in their lifetime. And I regularly think about how they would feel in these moments of uncertainty. As it seems the world continues to fall apart, I would strongly recommend that we all reevaluate just how prepared we are if things get sideways again. As it cools off, it might be a great time to pick up a backup generator and a few gallons of gas, if nothing else. I worked on the old Dodge for a couple of days and got a lot of repairs done to it. Got new motor mounts put on it, got new uh, rotors, uh, got the U-joints replaced up front within the uh, Dana 60 axle. And I was, as I was about to put it back together and, and get it back on the road, I remembered that I had some leaf springs uh, that were for another truck. Uh, they're a six inch lift, which is a little bit more than I want on this truck but they're not rated for a Cummins motor. So my thoughts are I may 
slap those leaf springs on and see if it kind of settles to about a four, three or four inch lift because these front leaf springs are so worn out on this truck. Um, again, right now with everything as crazy as it, as it is, um, the leaf springs that I tried to get for this truck, I can't even get, and it may be a little bit before I can get them. And uh, I, I think I'm gonna try and throw those six inch leaf springs on here. They were the same uh, width, same eyelet uh, measurements. They're just not rated for a Cummins motor, but if it settles to somewhere around a three inch lift, it'll work. So next week we're gonna get on the barn. We're gonna start setting posts for the barn. I'm gonna try and find time to play with this thing and, and get it finished up. And then really the next focus is finishing up the solar system and getting the new backup generator online.